<laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Beyond Prison Walls. I'm Cecilia Kuma with Playwrights Project, the Executive Director, and I'm delighted to be here. But I'm going to turn it over to Sean Khalifa, who is a teaching artist with us and a student of ours from the past, to tell you more. Thank you. Welcome, everybody, to Beyond Prison Walls 2024. I'm a teaching artist and alumni of the Playwrights Project. The Playwrights Project is a nonprofit that teaches playwriting in the San Diego area, in schools, community centers, and correctional facilities. Our mission is to empower people of all ages and backgrounds, to voice stories through theater, inspiring individual growth, and creating meaningful community connections. This is our 12th year of presenting stories from the community here at San Diego State in our ninth year presenting plays from Out of the Yard, a program that teaches playwriting in prisons. This project is meaningful to writers who are incarcerated and who don't often have an opportunity to share their insights and their emotions. You will see a wide range of that today. The performances will be one hour and will be followed by a discussion with the production team and alumni of the program and service providers. Tonight, you will see five short plays from Donovan and Sentinella State Prisons. The plays are Goldfish by David Rico, directed by Shana Jorley, Treasure by Mike Perez, directed by Kaylee Kite, Beautiful by Dante Henderson, directed by Amira Temple, Home at Last by Stephen A. Gonzalez, directed by Larissa Carrasco, the Bus Stop by Henry Oliva, directed by Al Zunega. The plays will be performed as a stage reading, which means the actors have a short rehearsal process with directors to analyze the text and interpret the writer's intentions and to stage the blocking. Plays are not fully staged with sets, props, and costumes, and actors haven't memorized lines. Please turn off your cell phones. Do not take photographs or videos of the performance or the talkback. And hold your applause between scenes and share applause between plays. Please welcome actors to the stage and enjoy the show. Thank you. Linda, it does not make it any easier for your customers to walk on them broken down stairs. What in the hell is them stairs gonna be rebuilt? They should have been fixed ages ago, but no, you can't bear seeing Elder happy, huh? What else do you ask to you too, Bob? What brings you here this early, so chippy and full of life? Darn Weather Channel said it'd be 90s. Sure feels like 120. Man, if I had a nickel for every lie I heard, I would be filthy rich. Filthy rich. Esta bien, senor Bob. There you go again. Who is teaching you that lingo, Linda? Because it sure ain't any of those parents. They've not said a darn muffle. You sure know how to make a lady's morning. Now, what can I help you with? I'm here because of those darn squirrels. They've been getting into my garden. If Rosalinda would have been with us today, she would have had a fit. So where do you keep the special rat poison? And... Show them whose garden they're messing with. Rat poison? Gosh darn right. Do I need to repeat it? No, Bob. Once is good enough. And leave those poor innocent. Innocent? Yes, innocent. They don't know any better. Instead, how about squirrel trappers? And I'll throw in the nuts for free. I don't want their dust on my conscience. Plus, not everyone is as cold as yourself, Bob. Well, well, well. Aren't you the sweetest person in town? My neighbor said a buckshot or two should do it. Well, I sure wouldn't want to ruin my precious garden. It is the only thing keeping me occupied ever since Junior left. Where do you keep the traps? 
two, three, four, if it's needed. I'm tired of them monsters. All they do is eat my colorful garden. Your garden, your problem. All I can do is try solving it. I hear the crap out of that. Again, Linda, where do you keep them? Out front by the aquariums. I'll get the nuts. Blah, blah, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Why that face? Are you okay? Uh, Sleeping well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. S stop with the concern. How much will it be? Did you hear it feels like hell outside and here you are, sweet talking? Don't worry. This is on the house. I do suggest cleaning your property and just then, and maybe then you wouldn't have the unexpected visitors. Uh, Linda. Linda, Linda. Those hazel eyes of yours. They don't fool me. All right, Bob. Have it your way. Gracias, mi linda. Bingo at seven? As usual. See you there. Glub, glub, glub. What the hell do you want? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow your roll, Joe. Uh, Joe is not the name. My granddaughter called me Bob, D didn't she? Well, excuse the fish out of me, Bobby. Uh, Bob the Builder to you. Nah, I don't think so. And what, It's Bobby to me. And what was the petty knock? Feeling a little lonely, my friend? Trying to see if a lonely old grump as herself is in need of a friend. What fly urinated in your aquarium this morning? Hey, Linda, how much for this darn fish? Because I'm feeling like having fish sticks tonight. Uh, bag it and tag it. <laughs> Say, Bobby, am I really going to be fish sticks? Because by the look of it, you sure are in need of a diet. And I don't mean seafood diet, eat everything you see, ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> Where are you taking me? Is that your trashy trailer up ahead? You sure are a trash talker, aren't you? So we've known each other for about mm, 20 minutes. What are you going to name me? Shut the front door. I am already on the last nerve with you and you're requesting a name? How pathetic. Why don't you keep your trap shut and spare quietness? I am trying to gather my thoughts, Gold. Gold? Gold is my name? Yippee! Yippee! I am Gold! The Almighty Gold! What the fish, Bobby? <laughs> this is nothing but backyard junk. You live here? Whoa, look at this. Ooh, you sure have me fooled. I don't get what they say. Don't judge a book by its cover. This place is dull, man. Say, Bobby. You call me Bobby once more, and you can count yourself out to Long Beach. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't get your undies in a bundle and get a grip of yourself. We are just getting to know each other, and there is no need for sensitivity, my friend. Sensitivity? Spell it. F-A-T-T-Y! One more loose lips out of you, and you're gone. Fatty, fatty, fatty! I told you, didn't I? Do not mess with Big Bob. <laughs> friend of yours. She's a charmer, isn't she? Your face says it all. It, a charmer? She was. <laughs> she will now be someone else's perfect match in Long Beach. <laughs> I'm just here to return the trappers. 
Any other brilliant ideas, Linda? Me, myself, I'd have gone with the poison. <sighs> By the way, your dad is coming over. Something about wanting to speak with me. Ah, money I don't have. Papa, Papa, Papa. My dad is one of the most successful brokers. And, and you're telling me he's coming to ask you for what? Money? The morning heat has gotten to your head. Instead, how about we concentrate on getting that good looking over there? He just came in as a special order. Go ahead, Papa. Don't be afraid. Lean in and view his colorful fins. The report on him, he was left out to dry. His owner hardly fed him and cleaned his bowl. Suppose he's a good companion, no trouble, but a little on the shy side. You're a perfect match. If you say so, darling. Wow, that's a first. No argue, no defense mechanism. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All you want is my money. Anything to say just to take my riches. Whatever. Let's make one thing clear, Fish. I have now become your owner, and what that means, I will feed you, clean your tank, and when I say lights off, lights off. Is that clear? Fish. Huh. You couldn't have picked a better name. <laughs> Fish, do not get too attached. If I were to get any lip out of you to Long Beach, you will go. Do you hear me? Say, Bob, will you please play a tune with the ukulele? It sure needs some playing, you know. Uh, dusting off a bit. Hey, son, come right in. Let me introduce you to Fish. Say, Fish, this is Junior, Bobby Junior. Dad, it's time. It's time for us to talk. I was wondering what the whole fuss was about, and just now I've seen it myself. And now that I have come to the decision, it is time for you to be placed into a veteran retirement home. What? Say what? What's the what's the fuss about? I, I'm I'm perfectly sane, aren't we, Fish? Uh, can you believe Junior the craziness he speaks? No, 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 son. No ifs or buts about it. The paperwork has been put in. As of now, you have a 30-day notice. And stop with all this craziness crap. It's not healthy imagining things that don't make sense. What's the deal with this? Oh, <gasps> wait. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? 
No way. I mean, you can hear me. And I can hear you. And nobody else can. Uh, uh, be, qu be quiet, Fish. Junior's news hit me like a cold bucket of ice. How can Junior do this to us? So this means... Bye-bye, Bob? Sadly, yes. I will go to the retirement home. You will sadly be set free. Why not enjoy the rest of our time together? Time has arrived, Fish. Till we meet again. Say, Bob, lots of fun requests before setting me free. Will you play our favorite tune? Say, Bob, don't be a stranger. Visit me when you ain't getting sponge baths. Promise me, Bob. Yes, Fish, it's a promise. See you here next week at this place and time. Unfortunate for you, we meet again. And Bobby, what's that called? Reunion? Karma to you, sucker! <laughs> when I'd be on the water bringing happiness to everyone. Now I'm close to a shell and being used for spare parts or a current playground. Can you please not be having a pity party right now? <laughs> I have a million things I could complain about, especially the weeds growing up through my hood or, or my motor or the rusting fenders. You have the nerve. You occasionally get taken out, driven through town, hooked up the trailer, hauling stuff, coming back happy and exhausted. And I can't gripe, why I oughta- All right, all right, I'm sorry. 
No, I'm not. You're just old and junky. That was very hurtful. We used to be a team, hooked up to one another, going to different lakes and piers. What about that one time your tires were slick and you couldn't pull me out and kept slipping until you finally got a good grip? Yeah. Well, honestly, I thought you were going to roll all the way into that lake. Okay, okay. But look, it, it hurts me to see you when the owner comes and picks apart from you every other month or so, your paint and name peeling away, seeing you reduced to a shell. I figured if I started to push you away, it would make it easier for me, you know, when we cut ties. I can't believe you. We have all over 30 years together. I will one day set sail in the great blue sea and bring joy to someone. Uh, let, let me ask. Do you believe I'll see the ocean again? I cannot answer that. Uh, but look, that, that kid, uh, here they come again. They're about to jump the fence and come play aboard, but, but that feels good. Plus, they try their best cleaning you up, knocking off all the spider webs and dust. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming to see me. This is the most excitement I've had in years, possibly decades. How I only wish you were old enough to load me into Old Faithful and take me out to the Great Lakes and never back to this junky field. Hey, hey, look who's being mean now. Well, this field has done nothing to you and it's not junky. Regardless of these weeds who are a nuisance to all of us living here in the field. Shut up, you old rusty hunk of junk. All of a sudden, you get some visitors and a little attention and your whole attitude changes. I really hope and pray one day you'll be out on the water again. Well, it's your own fault for letting Jim park you under that big old ugly tree. You should have clunked out like you did last time and let him push you to this empty spot right next to me. I'm sick and tired of you pooping on me. Just go, get out of here, get. You do know that beautiful majestic bird can't hear you, right? I told you, you should have clunked out. I know, I know, I heard you the first time. Look, I'm sorry I didn't mean to yell. I'm just highly upset right now. <laughs> Uh, get. Okay, maybe he did hear you after all. Or maybe he feels your angry, nasty energy level raising through your hood. Yeah, that's it, because I can feel it all the way over here. You better believe he felt it. How would you like to be pooped on every other night? You too know who you were talking to, right? Once upon a time, I had those scavenger seagulls trail me for miles and miles at a time. Oh, the good old days. My spirit is still skimming on the deep blue sea. They'll never take that from me. Look, don't let that majestic bird upset you. At your age, you should be wiser. Ever since Jim's son has been in high school, they put new tires on me and, and clean me up a little. I've been feeling different. Plus, on some weekends, the kid takes me through dirt hills, trails, and mountains. Yeah, yeah. The kid takes me through dirt hills and trails. Blah, blah, blah. You should have heard your voice. It's late. I'm gonna get some sleep. See you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Who's about to open the gate? Oh, it's the weekend. I'm uh, sleeping. Every day is the weekend for us here. What are you talking about? Look, here they come.
what was that all about? <laughs> I feel like I'm back in my prime, ready for a night on the town. <laughs> the driving sounds pretty good right about now. <laughs> the stories I could tell. Watch that much, you butthead. I'm tired of seeing you get all the attention while I slowly crack and fade away. Oh, look, they're back. Maybe they forgot to clean and detail me. Yeah, yeah, don't hurt your dream. an expensive price tag back in the day. I assumed all these years you could read. You don't have to get an attitude. All I asked was a question. Oh, why the long face lately? Some question. Look, they're putting me up for sale. This is all I know. This is my home. Don't you want to be on the road every day and live every day like it's your last? Or slowly rust away? Wherever you go, you'll be better off. Easy for you to say. If this rain does not stop by tonight, it, it's gonna mess up my armor, all tires and, and rims. If I didn't know any better, the smell in the air, the rain pouring down, if my panels could talk, we've seen our fair share and we might be in for a hurricane. What's a hurricane? Remember, about 10 or 15 years ago, that really bad storm and the wind and rain? Tiles, trees, mailboxes, and everything flying? And you were halfway submerged in water? Well, don't scare me. I still have nightmares, and I really hope it's not that bad. I've seen my fair share, and my intuition is telling me we might be in for a long night. This morning, I, I could feel the water crawling up my tire. Here we are in Newman, and half my tire is sunk in water. Do you, do you think it will let up? I do not know, but the trailer underneath is just about sunk, and I'm starting to feel a little lightness and flotation. If it does not let up like it did 10 or 15 years ago, this time I will slowly sink, and you will possibly float off and leave me. Mother Nature, Destiny, and Creator have heard my prayers after all these years. I will have no choice except follow the flow into the ocean down the road. You've held on to your faith all these years. And I clear, clearly remember you saying you would one day set sail again. I didn't want it to be like this, old buddy. You'll always have a special place in my spirit. The universe works in mysterious ways. Don't worry about me. I had a pretty good run. Whoa! That gate's sunken and broken! I'm flowing through! Out onto the street, it's a whitewater rapid! And that's the ocean! I've always had faith I'd set sail again. Old Faithful, look! It's an... isolated island. Look at this amazing new boat. I've never seen any boat like this before.
means? Mm, putting on makeup, wearing glitter dresses, having long straight hair like a Disney princess? <sighs> True beauty is not in those images you see, sweetheart. Beauty is not on the surface. It's a part of who you are, inside, as a person. How come no one at school gave me a Valentine's? I thought it was because I was ugly, because my hair is too short. People aren't taught to view what they see on TV as beauty. When they watch movies or commercials and see pretty women models selling a product of what people define as beauty. Why can't people look like me in the movies? Over the years, money became more popular than talent or true beauty. In the 80s, they used voiceover lip singers instead of actual singers because they didn't fit media's definition of beauty. Do they have Barbie dolls with dark skin and hair like mine? All my dolls were tall with long, pretty hair. You are a rare Please jewel. Me. Pure of heart, lovely, wavy <laughs> hair, golden bronze skin from a proud heritage of resilient queens. You don't need toy dolls to judge your heart, baby girl. <gasps> Mommy! <laughs> Will you be my Valentine's this year? <laughs> oh, yes, sweetheart. <laughs> Can Daddy be your Valentine's at the same time? Your father is my Valentine's every day. But I thought Valentine's was only one day a year. True beauty can't be celebrated only one day a year. If that were so, no one would get married and start families. Valentine's is a time for people to rekindle the feelings they have for one another. Your father and I share our love by the things we do for each other every day. He, he rubs my feet at night, and I cook his favorite meals. Why can't every day be Valentine's Day, where people love each other for world peace over the world? <laughs> That's a deep question. If the world thought more like you, <laughs> I'm sure love would exist more than hate and pain that plague our society. Can I wear lipstick to school tomorrow? Why? To look pretty like you. I'm sorry I taught you to see beauty as being painted on and with wearing flashy clothes. I promise to limit myself wearing makeup if you promise to look at yourself each morning and tell yourself that you are beautiful. Okay? Promise, Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me clean that makeup off your face. Yeah. It's time for bed. I need to hurry, Mommy. I need my beauty rest. <laughs> Dime a dozen. He said he loved me. Lust was his definition of love. That's why his eyes wandered on every curve that passed him. I wasted ten months to get replaced by a boob job and lip fillers. I lost weight mm. to look like a model for him. Pencil thin. Chasmin. Here. Look at yourself in this mirror. It's his loss. You are B E A U T Y F U L. All I see is an average bronze skinned girl with big lips and a flat nose. Look closer, Jasmine. What? I see natural, full lips. Not air tubes like Kimberly had done last summer. I see. Strong, resilient hair, no weave, a lovely face, almond eyes, sexy curves. <laughs> but your best feature 
is your heart. You are smart, kind, giving, dependable, honest, which are all priceless forms of what makes Jasmine truly beautiful. I am just tired of watching YouTube and seeing perfect act, perfect angles of models and actors portraying what they define as beauty. That may never change, but the image we see ourselves in is a choice we need to make. Women around the world hate what they should love about themselves. I have judged the way I look, which is the same every day. I look in this mirror, and I can't change who I see in this mirror or who I wish I could appear to be. Women have been their own worst enemies because all we look for is flaws. We starve our bodies and paint our faces to cover up our true natural selves. You're right, Nicole. My view of what I thought was true beauty and not being good enough was wrong. My self-worth can't be defined by what I think others believe to be beautiful, but what I see within myself. We live in a bubble of social media and short commercials that illustrate beauty and perfection in an imperfect world. There are no smiles without tears. You may be sad today, but tomorrow you'll rediscover joy. Love yourself first to know what it means to be loved by others. Thanks, girl. You remind me of the way my mother used to speak to me. Tonight, the way you spoke, it makes me feel like your spirit is still in the room with us. I really miss her. Maybe your mother's speaking through me, continuing to show you the way in life to find happiness and light during dark times in your life. <laughs> yes, I think of her every day. I will start to love myself more than my flaws. Let's go out! Where? Anywhere! Let's make tonight beautiful. Scene <laughs> three. The setting is Washington, D.C. government district. Fall of 2019. Jackson mm -hmm. Albert is having a late lunch at the classy Italian restaurant with her friend, Ginger. Every morning I wake, I see another new wrinkle on my face. I think I need a facelift. About 40? Look, Jazzy, after having three kids, things tend to meet up with gravity and hang. At 20, I was a perky, sexy fox. Mm. Now I feel like a big butt lazy house cat. I grew up questioning my worth and my value based on the images I saw around me instead of looking within myself to find happiness and love for self. It's easy for you to say. You still look like you're in your 20s. I look the way I do because I value my body. I work out each day, I don't smoke or drink, and I manage what I eat by avoiding things that would cause obesity or premature aging. So, I need to diet and Zumba classes? No. Look, all I'm saying is, we don't put sugar in our gas tanks, so why do we neglect loving ourselves enough to take care of the things that we put in it? Women don't need surgeries, makeup, and expensive labels to define our worth. I still like the idea of dyeing my hair from time to time. I got my first gray hair at 31, and it hasn't stopped since. That's the same way our bodies mature as women. We age like fine wine if we take care of it. But if not, we fall flat like cheap beer. I just look at women like J-Lo and Halle Berry, who are almost 60 and look like they are my age, but better and beautiful. What do you define as beauty? J-Lo and Halle Berry. <laughs> I'm kidding. I just envy my youth and days when I could wake up and feel invincible. Our bodies change, but who we are is the beauty that truly matters. As a young woman, I struggled finding out who Jasmine was and how to love who I am. And when I did, I found out what beauty means. <laughs> I define beauty as the way I see myself, inside and out. There are just certain days I feel more beautiful than others. We all do. Just never stop loving you for you. You're right. <laughs>
Surgery won't change the way I feel about myself. And beauty isn't skin deep, but connected from her mind to her heart. Save that money for surgery and let's go on a trip. Mm -hmm. Where should we go? Mm, somewhere beautiful. Paris? Oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> A small poem in East Los Angeles. It's a warm fall day and the air is relatively clear. Annette, 67, is with her daughter, Michelle, age 46. Come on, Mama, we don't want to be late. Ernie's waiting and we've waited too long for this day to, for, to be there late. Oh, Miha, Miha, don't worry. It's not like he's going anywhere until we get there. Besides, he kept us waiting this long, so now he gets to wait for us, yes? We'll be there in plenty of time. I know. It's just that I'm so excited to be picking him up that I want to get there right away so we can be with him. <clears throat> this has been a long time coming. Well, just give me a couple more minutes. I don't want to look like I just got out of bed when we get there. And it's a long drive all the way to San Diego. I'm almost ready. Almost ready. that Ernie's finally going to be home with us, Mom? <laughs> Who would have ever thought that he was going to be gone for so long? Even when they sensed him, it was so hard to believe that he was going to prison for life. Remember how hard it was those first few years? Oh, of course I remember. You were still a little girl. I was almost a teenager, Mom. Like I said, a little girl. Still, Ernie was so young, too. Just barely turned 18 and he was being put in prison for life. Oh, it almost killed me, Miha. I know this. He, he, he thought he was a man, but all I could see when they were taking him away was, was a scared little boy. My, my scared little baby. Oh, and now I'll get to hold him again. I know it won't be the same as when he was a little boy, but oh, I can't wait to have him in my arms. Do you remember when you two used to set up tents in the living room and pretend you were camping? Oh, Ernie wanted to go camping so badly that he really thought you two were in the mountains. It was so cute. <laughs> yeah, cute for you, but not for me. I loved Ernie, but I hated those silly camping trips, especially when he'd have one of his little friends over for the camp out, and they'd torture me all night. <laughs> Well, that's because all his little friends liked you. Uh, oh, and how about that time he climbed up on top of the roof and then slid down it on a skateboard? How crazy was he? So crazy that he broke his arm. Remember that part? Oof. Papa was so mad at him for that stunt. <laughs> well, that's because it cost us a small fortune in doctor bills. Well, that wouldn't be the first bill Papa had to pay because of Ernie's nonsense. That was for sure. <laughs> As mad as I know that it made Papa, I also know that Papa was kind of proud of Ernie for being such a little bold kid. <laughs> Maybe he shouldn't have been so proud and should have been a little harder on him when he messed up. Maybe then he wouldn't have gotten caught up in, in the drugs and, and hanging out with those other troublemaker boys. <sighs> you know, I, I loved your Papa, but I think he was a little too easy on Ernie. I know, Mom, but Ernie was Papa's boy, and, and his eyes really couldn't do any wrong. <laughs> and even if he was too soft on Ernie, you can't deny that we all sure had a lot of great memories together here. I can definitely say there was plenty of love in this house, that's for sure. Ernie made his choices regardless of all that. I know, baby. I guess I just, I wish things had turned out different for him. He had such great potential. That's all in the past now, Mom. He's coming home and we don't have to worry about that anymore. Everything is going to be much better now. You're right. 
No sense dwelling on all those past things when we have our whole future ahead of us. You're gonna make me cry. Mom, please just hurry up so I don't have to end up redoing my makeup too. Oh, this is gonna be a special day for all of us. It's gonna be so wonderful to have Ernie back in his own room, back in the house we all grew up in. It's gonna feel like home again. So, so, so what? That this hasn't been a home then? You know what I mean, Mom. It'll feel like a complete home again with the whole family. <laughs> Too bad Papa couldn't be here to see Ernie come home. Thankfully, he's, he's up in heaven watching us right now. We'll definitely take Ernie to see him. I know he wants to do that. Uh, well, that won't be possible if you don't finish getting yourself ready so that we can hit the road, Mom. Oh. Come on, let's move it. Hey, don't you be giving me orders, young lady. I am your mama, so you get your orders from me. <sighs> Nevertheless, grab the keys, honey. I'm ready to go now. I am so excited right now, Mom. <laughs> Oh my God, I really can't believe this. Oh, me too, baby, me too. Okay, let's go, let's go get Ernie. <laughs> You know what, Mom? I think I'm gonna record the trip. That'll give us all something to watch later, too. I think that'll be fun. That sounds good. It'll make the trip more, more interesting. Oh, I'm still in disbelief that we were picking him up. I thought he'd be in there forever with the way he was messing up. Well, Mom, I know that it was his choice to make a lot of bad decisions, but you gotta look at the fact that the drugs really had a huge hold on him and made him do stupid things. Not that I am making excuses for him. <sighs> Sounds like it, but I, I know, baby. The drugs have always been his, been his downfall, especially when he started to do good. <laughs> Look, Mom, isn't that the little preschool that Ernie went to? Remember when we used to drive by and he would see the car and yell out all excited? <laughs> oh, he was so cute. I really wish he could have stayed that way. <laughs> I wish both of you could have stayed little children forever. Yeah, Mom, well, everyone has to grow up. Oh. Besides, despite all of Ernie's struggles, he's always been a good person at heart. And I think you did a great job keeping me on the right track. <laughs> oh, oh, look, honey! There's a skateboard park that Ernie used to skate at! Oh, he really thought he was gonna become a professional skater? <laughs> you gotta be able to stay on the board to be a pro. Oh, don't be so mean. He was good. That was one thing he really loved to do. Until he started to hang around with those troublemaker boys and <coughs> got into using drugs. If only he would have stuck to skating. Well, I think he was as much of a troublemaker as most of those other boys, so let's not put all the blame on the other kids. <sighs> Look over there, Mom. There's his high school. Oh. I don't know what to think about that, though. I, I wonder what Ernie would say about his high school days. He was a really smart student and did so well despite always being in trouble. It makes you wonder how a person can focus like that when they are staying high all the time. But what do you mean, all the time? He wasn't using drugs all the time. He was doing good no, most Mama, of the time. He was. Oh, it's sad to say, but he was. I mean, you just didn't know because he was good at hiding it. He could seem like he was doing good, but really, he was messing up. Look, there's the, uh, the Burger King that Ernie got his first job at. Uh, you remember how much food he used to bring home every day? He sure kept us fed. He loved that job even though it was just part-time. 
I remember him stealing all that food. Don't be so hard on him, Mom. He was trying to help. You know, that's where he met his first real girlfriend, too. She was so pretty and so nice. He shared a good thing with her. Too bad he messed that up, too. Oh, now who's being hard on him, eh? Anyways, it's probably a good thing that it didn't work out since he went to prison so soon after that and never had any children. Oh, we would have a hard time raising a child if they had stayed together. And I have no doubt that they would have had a child. Hey, there's Mr. Phillips! Oh, hi, hi, Mr. Phillips! We're going to pick up Ernie from prison. <laughs> we'll stop by for a visit on the way home. <laughs> Oh, I can still see the time your papa took Ernie to get his first haircut. Huh? He cried and cried and then was so happy when he saw himself in the mirror afterwards. From then on, he never wanted to go anywhere else. And he never changed his hairstyle until he got all wrapped up in the gang. And then he just kept it bald all the time. He was so handsome until he cut all his hair off. Doesn't it feel strange to be taking this drive again, but knowing it's for the last time? You know, every time we would get on this freeway, I knew that I'd be happy for a little bit of time that day, but then be so, so, so sad again as we came back home. I hated to have to leave my baby in there all those times. Well, we won't be leaving him there this time. He's coming back with us, that's for sure. Oh, well, look over there! You, you can see the ocean! Oh, in all my years we drove down here to see Ernie, I, I never noticed that you could see the ocean from the freeway. We'll have to stop and let Ernie see the ocean on the way back. Oh, it's been a long time since we took him to the beach. It'll be like when you were little and we took trips to the beach together. Except, Papa won't be there. He's with us always, in spirit. You know, Mom, I'm just relieved that after all those years of drug use, Ernie finally doesn't have to fight the demon anymore. It's bittersweet that it took such tragic results to break his habit, but at least it's done. He won't struggle with that crap anymore. No, he won't. That junk took away my baby's whole life. Took him away from his papa when his papa was sick and needed his son. Took him away from you when you were still a young woman and needed a big brother to look out for you. And caused him to miss so many huge moments in our family's history. Not to mention the impact that all of his bad behavior had on the community and people in the community. We cannot forget about all that. Mom, he did do a lot of bad things. Regardless of whether the dope messed up his mind or not, you taught him right from wrong. You taught us both right from wrong, and he chose to do all the wrong things. Thankfully, he did take responsibility for all of his actions and stop blaming others and his situation. You're right, honey. Drugs or not, he, he knew better. I know he's no saint, and I, I thank God, too, that he made his amends and repented. I don't know how I would feel about bringing him home if he hadn't made things right with God and the community. Oh, it would be hard to look at him every day otherwise. Well, we can be proud to have him home, Mama. Oh, look, Mia! We're coming up on the exit in a few miles! Oh, I'm getting butterflies in my stomach now! I guess I don't know if I'm, I'm happy or afraid to be here now. We've waited for this day for, for so long, but it still doesn't seem real. Well, we're coming up on the prison now, so it's about as real as it gets. It'll be fine, Mom. You're going to be able to hold it together. All of the hardest parts are behind us now. He's almost home. <sighs> OK, let's take a deep breath and go get him. Oh, I hope he's ready. <laughs> Oh, 
We're finally here, Mom. This is exciting. Look, here comes a guy out right now. I bet that's his wife. Look how happy she is. Oh, I'm too nervous. I don't know if I'll be able to handle this. You will, Mom. We've waited for this a long time. Just a little longer and he'll be with us. Take some deep breaths. <sighs> oh, ma'am, how can I help you today? <laughs> Hi, uh, we're here to pick up my son, Ernie Vieta. Oh, we were told to check in here to pick him up. Okay, let me see. Yes, Ernie Vira, CDCR, number 797531, is that him? Yes, yes, that's him. Well, let me see. I'll inform the PIO that you're here and bring him out. One moment, please. Okay. Now I'm getting nervous, Mom. This is nerve-wracking. Hello, Mrs. Vieira? Oh, yes, yes, I'm she, and uh, this is my daughter, Michelle. Oh, uh, we're here to pick up my son, Ernie Vieira. Yes, ma'am, we've been expecting you. Your son's right over there. <gasps> Mrs. Vieira, on behalf of the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation, and the warden here at Richard J. Donovan, we convey our deepest condolences to you and your family for the loss of your son. The other box is his property, ma'am. Once again, our condolences. Uh, take all the time you need. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll get the other box, Mom. What's your problem now? Man, I'm just sitting here. That's your problem. You're just sitting there, doing nothing. Wow, now you're a mind reader. You think you know everything. I know you give up too easy. I know you don't have a job. And I also know you didn't come home last night. I did come home last night. Just couldn't sleep. I have a lot on my mind. So since I can't read mind, why don't you tell me what has you all stressed out? It's nothing. You see what I mean? I try to communicate with you and you just shut down on me? Okay. Okay? What? I'm tired. Tired? Tired of what? You don't have a job, so that can't be it. Wow. That's why I, that's why I don't tell you anything. You always have something smart to say. So if you are tired, then what are you doing about it? Because sitting on this couch, doing nothing, doesn't help. Just... You're just such a piece of work! And you're always nagging me, day and night? And you say you're tired? What about me? You don't think that I'm tired of having to tell you what to do all the time? And that's another thing! I'm tired of you always telling me what to do. That's it. I'm gone. Gone where? Anywhere, as long as, as it's far away from you. Well, while you're away, maybe you'll find a job. And maybe you'll stop being such a...
So uh, where are you going? Huh? I said, where are you going? I don't know. Hmm. Not much of a destination. I'm just trying to get away. You mean run away? Who are you? The name's Bob. Just having some trouble. Mm. With the wife, huh? How'd you know? Uh, I recognize that look anywhere. <laughs> I just, I don't know what to do. It seems my best isn't good enough. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? Man, I just want to stay out of trouble. Mm. Not go back to prison. Take care of my family. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Can't catch a break, and I'm tired. <clears throat> Sounds like you're giving up. I don't have a choice. <laughs> Son, there's always a choice. So tell me, what choices do I have? Well, for one, you could choose not to give up. Second, you can ask for help. Third, you can go back home and apologize to your wife. <laughs> apologize to the wife? And for what? She's the one with the bad attitude. Was she wrong when she told you you don't have a job? How do you know I don't have a job? <laughs> do you know me? Nah, I, I don't know you. But I can see your life hasn't been easy. <laughs> you can say that again. Man, I need a drink. <laughs> now that would be a te terrible decision to make. But help me forget some of my problems. <laughs> but your problems will still be there. They don't disappear in the bottle. Yeah, I guess you're right. My wife is always telling me to make better decisions, <laughs> to think before I act. Yeah. Sounds like you have a smart wife. <laughs> yeah, she's smart all right, but she has this attitude. But is she wrong? What I mean is, she could be right in what she's saying, but wrong in the way she's saying it. Come to think about it, she is right most of the time. But her tone, it's just all wrong. Do you tell her how you feel? <laughs> Tell her how I, how I feel? And for what? So she can look me in the face and tell me how much of a man I'm not? Sounds like that's what you believe she would say. But how do you know what she really thinks unless you open up to her? Said something about choices. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Every day we have choices to make. And sometimes we base our choices on what's fun, what's fast, and what's easy. And what's wrong with that? Well, because when your life gets dull, slow, and difficult, you're not prepared for those struggles, and you start to feel worn down, and you, all you want is an easy way out. I can't help but think about my wife. When we got married, I thought things would be so easy. But I know, I know I haven't done my part. Listen to me. It's not too late to do better and be better. Your wife needs you now more than ever. I know. I haven't totally been open and honest with her. I have a job interview tomorrow morning. Did you tell her that? Man, she didn't give me the chance to. I've been thinking about it all day. I just, I just don't want to fail. We fail when we don't try. I know. This time, even if I fail, <coughs> I'm not going to give up. I'm happy to hear that. Coming? Nah, I have to go home to my wife. <laughs> Good choice. Safe travels, and thanks for that advice. I shouldn't have off and left like that. I need to be a better husband. Where were you? I was just at the corner of the first street at the bus stop. Well, I'm glad you're back. You are? Of course. I shouldn't have said what I said. I need to be more mindful. No, you're right. I need to learn to communicate my feelings and not expect you to read my mind. 
I have some good news. What's that? I have a job interview tomorrow morning. Why didn't you tell me? Man, it's just a, it's just an interview, not a job. Is that why you slept on the couch? I woke up and you weren't next to me and I felt scared, so I reacted in anger. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. I shouldn't have made you cry like that. I wasn't crying <coughs> because of you. Then why were you crying when I came in? My mom just called and sent me a photo of my great uncle Bob. He had a heart attack and died. What? I hadn't spoken to him in years, but when I was a kid, he used to give me good advice about life. I, I think I just met him. How could you? When I was at the bus stop, Bob sat down next to me. It couldn't have been him. He died at his home last night in New York. Let, let me see that photo your mom showed you. <coughs> that, that's him! <laughs> <laughs>